Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where today I'm going to approach some hardest questions for year nine maths or grade eight maths and go through the solutions with you. Again, I'm just going to do two questions today, just are quite difficult on the year nine maths or grade eight course. And I want to see exactly how you get on with them as well. If you like this kind of video, then do let me know in the comments below so I can make more videos of hardest year eight questions or hardest year seven questions as well. Right, let's get started here. So we have to find the total area. So I'll always underline the key information. So we're looking for the area of the shape below comprised of a triangle and a semicircle. So notice in the question, we're told that this is a triangle and it's not the best drawing in the world, but this is a semicircle here. And also a key information here is give your answer in terms of pi. So at the end, no decimals, we're writing say 76 pi or 100 pi, everything in terms of pi. Now, the way I approach these questions is I divide this into two shapes. So I'm going to call this shape A and I'm going to call this shape B. Now notice we have the line going all the way across the circle. So that's called the diameter. But in order to use the area formula for a circle, so the area of just a standard circle, not a semicircle, is equal to pi r squared. So notice we need the radius, not the diameter. Now, with that in mind here, what we can do is we can actually pop in the radius here. So the radius of this is half of seven, which is equal to 3.5 centimeters. Now I know the radius, I can then work out the area of A. So the area of A, so imagine we had a full circle, well that would just be equal to pi times 3.5 squared. But because we've got a semicircle, again, this is why we underline important information here, we need to divide by two because we have half a circle. Now, I'm not going to do anything with that calculation at this point. I'm going to leave it alone exactly where it is. And when we come to our very final answer, we'll put it together with area B. Now, on to area B here. And notice we have a triangle. Now, notice the base of our triangle. Imagine we sort of flipped it round. It's going to be seven here. And what we need to know is the perpendicular height. So the height that goes at right angles to the right. Now, because we've worked out this is 3.5 centimeters here, we actually know what this length is here. So notice this is 3.5 centimeters. This is eight. So what do we add to 3.5 to give us eight centimeters? Well, that's going to be 4.5 centimeters. So very sneaky here. They've given you this 5.7, but actually it's not very useful in this question. Now we know these things, the area of a triangle. So the area of a triangle, generally speaking, is a half base times height. So what we can do here then, you then go a half times the base, that's going to be our seven here, and then multiplied by the height, that's going to be 4.5. So to work out the total area here, we're going to combine together A and B, and this is where I will go to the calculator, because calculator is very clever, it can actually convert these things in terms of pi. Okay, so I've popped in the area A here. Now notice your calculator is quite clever here. I've typed in our calculation, so pi times 3.5 squared divided by two. Notice it gives it in terms of pi for us. So I can just write this in 49 over eight pi. So that represents part A. And then because there's no pi involved in the second part, we can then just pop in the number directly. So we have 0 0.5, remember, that's the same as a half times seven times 4.5 equals, that gives us 15.75. So I can pop that in, 15.75. Again, we've got a mixture of fractions and decimals, which is not ideal, but again, they will accept that out. So you could change everything into fractions and everything into decimals, that is up to you, but I've left the answer as so for the four marks. 
Right, on to the second question, and this is a bit more conceptual rather than lots of working in this particular question. So a measuring cylinder here with diameter 5 centimetres, again, important information, so I'm going to underline that, is partially filled with water. So the water doesn't go all the way to the top. When a stone is placed in the cylinder, so this stone here is placed in, the water level rises by three centimeters. And from this information somehow, we're supposed to find the volume of the stone, again in terms of pi. So just like that previous question. One of the skills in grade eight maths and year nine maths is to make sure you develop your ideas in terms of pi, not going to the calculator straight away, but also thinking about how we can keep it as accurate as possible. Now, notice the water is normally filled up to this. As soon as we add the stone, so the volume of that stone, we actually get an extra part of volume that gets added here. So what we're actually saying here is the volume of this stone must be the difference between the height of this and the height of this. Now we know what that is, we're told the water level rises by three centimeters. So if we can find the volume of this water here, which the stone has added to this measuring cylinder, then we can find the volume of the stone itself. So you could write this in words, so the volume of the stone is the equal to the volume of the, yeah, the higher uh, cylinder minus the volume of the smaller height of the cylinder. So in other words, this one minus this one. Uh, but essentially what we're looking for here is this shaded volume here, this part here. Now actually we've got all the information to actually find what this volume is. Notice we know the volume, so the diameter is equal to five. Now remember to work out the volume of any cylinder, let's pop this down here. It's the volume of any cylinder. Again, it's a formula It's useful to know is equal to the area of a circle, so pi r squared, but then we multiply by the height of the particular cylinder. So notice our radius in this case is not five, so don't fall for that trick. It's equal to 2.5, so half of it, just like we saw in the previous question, and the height is equal to three, because we're told that in the question. So if we pop that in, so we've got pi times 2.5 squared, and then times by the height, so times by three. Again, we can be a bit lazy at this point because we have a calculator here that can actually work this out directly for us in terms of pi. So if I just do this in front of you, again, to use the pi button, we go to shift and down here, you see this little gold pi symbol down here. We have pi times 2.5 squared times three, and notice it gives it gives it to us in terms of pi, 75 over 4 pi. I prefer fractions anyway, so that's fantastic. I can just then leave it as this. Remember our units here, so always be careful. Remember it's a volume, so it's going to be cubic centimeters. Now one thing to show you, if I go back, to my calculator, 75 over 4 pi. If you ever wanted a decimal, so questions in the future may ask to say two decimal places, three significant figures, there's a great button on the Casio, and that is the SD button down here. If you click on that, notice it will put it automatically into decimal for you. Press it again, back to fractions. Press it there, decimals. So notice you can switch between both very easily with a Casio. Okay, so that's a really important uh, topic here to focus on, working in terms of pi. If you want to catch up on all things year nine maths, I spend two and a half hours, yes, that's not a joke, two and a half hours going through all the topics that you need to know to succeed at year nine maths. And this is based on the White Rose Maths curriculum that's often used in the UK, but also schools across the world as well. If that's useful to you, then have a look at the video in front of you and give it a like if you like these kinds of videos. Bye bye for now.